Hello, this is Comfort Country Explore the Four, and I'm Joanne Hartman. Today we are just north of Tweed, and we're at John Dervie's Timber and Log Homes. Um, and I'm with Martin Seiger. Martin, can you tell us a wee bit about your homes in general, the business? Well, we've been building log homes here since 1976, and uh, I've owned the business with my business partner, Martin St. Jean, for the last 10 years. Um, as you can see, it's, a, it's, a, it's what we call a handcrafted log home. The logs are left in their natural shape. Um, they're all fitted to each other uh, with, with special tools, and um, most of the work is, is, is hands-on work. Right. And uh, uh, most of the buildings that we do are, are, are permanent residences and, right. and very nice cottages. Okay. Now this house, this is, you're finishing, this is the top part of another house. This is the second story of a, of a home that we've already shipped the first story. Okay. Uh, to Canada. Okay. That's unusual. You know, normally they're just single story buildings or story and a half. Buildings. And this is a large one? This is a large building. And how big is this one? It's about 4,000 square feet. Wow. And so how long would it take for you to build a, a house this size? Uh, well, this, this house is going to take us about 12 weeks to, to prepare the log work, ship it and, and assemble it. Okay. And that's with a 10 man crew. Okay. And so someone has come to you with this design? That's correct. Yeah. And, but you can give people ideas and tell them what will work and what won't work? That's usually that's usually how it works. Okay. Yeah, this one was this this house was designed by an architect in, in Ottawa. And right. Okay. Okay. So now with a special home, there comes special techniques. How do you know when you take it apart and go put it back together? This is going to fit the the one that it's supposed to fit, and it's like a jigsaw puzzle, right? Yeah. Well, that's the uh, I mean that's the nature of the of the construction technique is that each log has to be fitted to the one below it. Right. And it's primarily done with a, a scriber tool, which 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 matches the contour of the two log surfaces draws a line on the log that's that we're going to cut the notch out of right and then the once that once that's been um, once that's been scribed then the log is taken down it's cut out with a chainsaw and and, and finished with other hand tools and um, it's usually a one-shot deal once once the, the the log has been cut out it's put back on the building and usually it's a first-time fit okay now they, they have a very smooth outer finish and uh, you were telling me earlier about what go, what's involved in getting all of the bark off now, yeah, when the logs arrive in the in the yard, they come right from the bush, and they're, mm -hmm. they're, they have their bark on, and that's the first thing that has to come off. And it's it's ugly work. It has to be knocked off with a peeling spud. It's a it's a heavy it's heavy. It's one inch, and it's pretty brutal work. Time consuming. Time consuming. Once okay. it's once it's once that's uh, off, then they have to be draw knifed, and that's what. Uh, Stephen Somebody's is doing, doing over there. there. He's, uh, yeah, he's that's, taking him all day to do that. Yeah, it's taking him all day to do. Okay. That's a particularly big log. And um, basically, he's he's peeling the top surface of the wood away with a sharp bladed knife, and uh, it's almost like a planing the wood, but it's not a it's not a completely smooth finish. You okay. get you get you get a lot, you get flat surfaces on the wood. Well, Martin, thank you very much. There's a lot involved in uh, putting together a log home, as you can see. So if anyone is interested, they can certainly go to your website or stop by and just have a Absolutely. look. Absolutely. And so for this time, we are Comfort Country Explore the Four. We're just north of Tweed, and we're at John DeVries Log and Timber Homes. Explore the Four is brought to you by Comfort Country, featuring the communities of Maydock, Marmara, Tweed, and Sterling. For more information about this edition of Explore the Four, visit online at comfortcountry.ca. Hello, this is Comfort Country Explore the Four, and I'm Joanne Hartman. Today we are north of Tweed at John DeVries Log and Timber Homes, and I'm with Martin Slager. Martin, tell us a little bit about uh, the construction of going into this house. The material, what material have you used in this house? Uh, we use, uh, the logs are eastern white pine. Okay. And they range in diameters of, of uh, 13, 14 inches at the top and up to 24 inches at the butt end. So they're pretty big. They're big logs. They're, yeah. And how old would most of these trees, you said about 100 they're, years they're old? They're probably 75 to 100 years old. Okay. And do you, where do you get most of your material? Uh, different parts of Ontario. Um, a lot of these logs were locally harvested. And do you get them from across Canada as well or in this? Uh, some, some of the logs come from the States and so we've, uh, we've had shipments from uh, Quebec as well. Okay, so it just depends on but what kind of it's log? Eastern, it's Eastern white pine that we use and most of the time they're from Ontario. Okay, okay. So now this is a unique home, so it's probably going to have unique problems, right, when it comes to building it. Um, what are some of the challenges you face when you're building log homes? Well, the, the, the biggest challenge is that the, the, the logs we use are green, which means that they, they haven't had a chance to dry out, they have their full moisture content. This means that there's going to be a, a fair amount of settling okay. of the building. So 
the logs, the top, the top of the wall, say when we finish building it, it would be at 10 feet. That's going to settle four to five inches over oh, the course of seven okay. years. That poses all kinds of issues when we have to allow for space of, of spaces above window and door openings, right. uh, interior partitions, anything that's fixed it has to be uh, designed to allow for the settling of the building. Okay, okay. So now most of your customers, um, somebody who's looking to buy a log home, what are they looking for? Is it uniqueness or just yeah, building I think it's something the, different? Yeah, it's, it's the unique appearance of the building, yeah, um, yeah. The, uh, the, craftsmanship, the living environment yeah. that it creates, right. the, the, na the natural beauty. I mean, it's, it's wood and it's wood in one of its most natural elements. Right. Um, and, and just there, there is a kind of a psychological rustic a rustic appeal sure. of, a, of the log cabin, although these are log homes. Yeah, so. for Canadians, right. <laughs> yes. So now this home, you build it, you disassemble it, you travel with it, and then you assemble it again. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so that takes a lot of, you mark everything like a jigsaw puzzle? Yeah, each log, uh, once the building is, is completed on the site here, all the pre prefabrication is done, then each log is marked individually. So that we know when we're putting it back together, where 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 it's uh, where the sequence is, where it's gonna is go. going to go, where it's going to go. So, what's the uh, farthest you've ever had to travel to take a home? Uh, well, the farthest we've we've taken a home is to uh, near Williamsport in Pennsylvania. It's about okay. seven hours away. We've got two homes there, and there's a couple homes in Albany. Yeah. Uh, we've we've worked in Texas. We've, we've done some structures in oh, Texas. Oh, cool. Yeah. And uh, we've also did some work at uh, Disney World. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. In Florida, yeah. And what you built a little log home there? No, it was. It, we were hired as uh, consultants, uh, uh, special tradesmen, to work on some of their some of the big projects oh. there that, that had all log elements in them. That's that's interesting and fun. Where do most of your homes go to? Uh, uh, probably seventy percent of the homes are shipped to places in Ontario. Okay, yeah. And then the rest into the states. The, the states, states. now. Yeah. Oh. And is there anything that, uh, if someone is looking to get a log home, you'd say, what is the one thing um, that you would say that would entice someone to say, you know what, a log home is for me? <laughs> I don't know no, if I can answer be, that one. Well, there must be something, uh, you know, really. Well, I think you just you just have to be totally enamored with, right. the, with the whole concept right. of, the, of the natural Because beauty, it's different. The unique yep. architectural features and structure, and um, just the pleasure of living in a, in a home that's made of solid wood. Right. And a renewable resource. Yeah, it's for a sure. Resource, for sure. sure. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Well, for this time on Comfort Country Explore the Four, we are north of Tweed at John DeVries Log and Timber Homes. So if you are looking for something unique in your home, this is the place to come. Explore the Four is brought to you by Comfort Country, featuring the communities of Maydock, Marmara, Tweed, and Sterling. For more information about this edition of Explore the Four, Visit online at comfortcountry.ca. Hi, I'm Elaine Capusta, and welcome to Comfort Country. Comfort Country has many lakes and rivers, and kayaking is a great way to explore the four. Today, we're here at the Unconventional Moose with Tracy to find out about kayaks. And here, there are many. Tell us about these kayaks. Well, Elaine, there's quite a few different types of kayaks. It all depends on what type of kayaking you're looking at doing. If you're looking for more of a recreational, along the shores of a river, uh, just a, a gentle paddle, I would recommend a sit on top. They're a very comfortable boat. They're easy to get in and out of. Uh, they're very light to move around, and they maneuver very well along the uh, shores. We have a, a model that is about nine feet long, which is great for children right up to grandmothers. It's easy to get in and out. The kids can actually swim out of that boat, which is a nice mm. feature. Uh, then you can move up a little bit to a typhoon. It has a bit of a taller back. It's a bit longer, so it tracks a little nicer on the water. Some storage compartments in there as well. And there's also a double model where you can have two people in if there's a smaller child or if mm -hmm. somebody doesn't want to paddle and just wants to, to go along for the ride. If you're comfortable being inside a kayak, you can go to a sit-inside model. They range anywhere from 10 feet up and beyond. Uh, we usually stick to recreational ones, so the longest ones we have are a 12-foot boat. Um, they have a few more bells and whistles, a bigger storage compartment, foot pegs. Uh, you can get a longer season out of a sit-inside because basically you could put a skirt mm -hmm. on. You don't have to worry about uh, getting wet in the boat. So depending on what type of paddling you're looking at doing, you know, there's there's a kayak for every type of paddling. <laughs> <laughs> and that one makes the season last a little longer. Yes. What about the safety? 
things All that right. we have to think about. In a kayak, you're going to have to have a safety kit by law. A safety kit is a baler, and it has a rope inside it, a whistle, and a flashlight. And you're required by law to have that in your boat with batteries in your flashlight. And you also require a life jacket. And uh, there are all different kinds of uh, jackets. They design them now for paddlers with spe special ah. backs for them and whatnot. But uh, is, even if you're a good paddler, you should always have a safety jacket in your boat by law. Where do you go paddling around here in Comfort well, Country? Here at the Moose, we do uh, we do some kayak rentals, and we typically send them up to a spot called High Falls. It's a beautiful river paddle, very gentle, about 45 minutes. You see a little bit of wildlife along the way. You can get out at the end and hike to the top of the falls and have a picnic and whatnot. It's a nice, close paddle, but in Land Lakes, there's many rivers and uh, lakes mm -hmm. to paddle. Uh, there is a guide put out by a local tourist association mm -hmm. that shows some maps and routes that you yes, can take. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah. Yes, very, very informative now. Tell us about whitewater kayaking, Tracy. Well, there's some fabulous spots for whitewater kayaking in the area, very renowned in the spring when the water's running very high. Up in Queensboro, they have a, an awesome display of kayakers coming over the dam. Many people go up to, uh, to watch it, and uh, the Crow is also a great spot for some whitewater kayaking. Thanks, Tracy, for joining us and telling us about kayaking. It's been my pleasure, Elaine. <laughs> And thank you for coming to Comfort Country and learning about kayaks. My name is Elaine Capusta. Hope to see you again. Explore the Four is brought to you by Comfort Country, featuring the communities of Maydock, Marmara, Tweed, and Sterling. For more information about this edition of Explore the Four, visit online at comfortcountry.ca. Hi, I'm Elaine Capusta, and welcome to Comfort Country. Today we're at the unconventional moose that's north of Tweed and we're going to talk about a couple of artisans. Here at the moose is Paula Harding. Hi Paula. Hi Elaine, how are you? I'm fine. Good. Tell us about this work. Well, what we try to do here at the moose is represent local artisans. So one of the, the two of the companies that we have chosen is one is Watson Pewter. Watson Pewter is definitely local. It is handmade here in Tweed it, and it's been around since 1972. Ruth has taken up the gauntlet from her dad who started the business way back when and as you can see what she does is focus on things that are local to this area like kayaking, like wolves, like uh, moose prints obviously and curling which is yes. also a big event here in this area as well as there are pins and rings and all kinds of things. This is just a small representation of what they do. <laughs> One of the other local artisans that we represent is from the Marmara area. And what Julie does is she creates jewelry as well as she makes fudge. The jewelry started uh, from what she's told us. She used to collect rocks when she and her husband used to go away yes. with the kids. So her husband said one day, what are you going to do with all these rocks? So the stones now have become jewelry. So this is all of her stones. On all of the stones in the jewelry all have some kind of a story about where she's found them. And then on top of that, what Julie also does is she creates fudge, which is phenomenal fudge. It's called my favorite fudge, because yeah. it truly is. I my have had fudge. it. You mm -hmm. have had it, exactly. Yes. And it is also made locally in Marmara as well. I notice you have a wide variety of products here. Do you have more local people showing their works? We do. We try to represent as many as we can. This is one little thing. It's called the Wiener Master. And basically what it does is it allows you to roast your wieners and use this to keep your hands from, from getting, getting burned. burned. Exactly. Great for kids. And it is made by a gentleman not too far from here. That wasn't working very well. Sorry about that, Chief. <laughs> um, the other thing we do, and I don't know if you've seen coming up Highway 7, there is a, a group of uh, metal work. And this young lady, she creates things like this is a turtle door knocker, because you know we have lots of turtles around ah. here, or snapper. She also does things like switch plates that are made of deer. And she sells a, quite a variety of this kind of cast metal as well. Yeah. And not only do we carry local stuff, we also carry a lot of Canadian artisans. So we try to cover from one end of the country to the other. So it's not just our people in comfort yeah. country. Yeah. It is a wide variety. I've noticed that whenever visiting the store here. Um, do you suppose we could try some of that fun? You go right ahead. Apparently she's got two new flavors. One is Algonquin Trail and the other one is Canadian Shield. That young lady, you're biting into the Canadian Shield. Canadian Shield, for sure. Just a nibble. <laughs> Just a nibble. Perfect. I'm going to take this with me. <laughs> That's all for Comfort Country today. Thanks, Paula, for uh, sharing all the products that you have here and all the information. And I hope everyone comes back to Comfort Country. 
I'm Elaine Capusta. See you again. Explore the Four is brought to you by Comfort Country, featuring the communities of Maydock, Marmara, Tweed, and Sterling.